Hi, Carolyn Carney here at Palais and Arts, and I'm standing with the wonderful Dawn Merritt in front of her two pieces, which will be in our portrait show, which runs from January 19th through March 12th. Dawn, could you introduce us to your pieces? I'd love to. Okay, this piece is called Jigsaw Unplugged, and it's based on two pieces by Picasso, the three musicians, which is pretty obvious, pretty obvious and Guernica, and you can see signs of that here and here. And as a child, I always saw the painting The Three Musicians and just fell in love with it. Yeah. It was something I always wanted to pay homage to. So that's my take on it. Uh, a little backstory. Mm -hmm. I have a sister who's a DJ and I'm oh, oh. the DJ thing. I have a niece who is a Muslim, which I like the idea of flipping it and doing the whole nun idea, but it's the same yeah. kind of garment you're using. Well, not, it's uh, updating it more to like what, it, what we experience now. More pop experience yeah. to it. Um, and I've always wanted to pay, play the upright bass. So that's why I chose those particular uh, instrumentations. Uh, and here, you know, the glove is always synonymous in pop art. Uh, we see it on Mickey, we see it on other characters. Mm -hmm. And I just thought it was a nod to, to pop culture. Yeah. And that's pretty much what's going on here. Um, yes, and I see the monster horse. As well as the kind of sun or lighting that Picasso used, so I think I think you've really this gone, is a great homage. Yeah, yeah, you've really brought in a whole collection. I, I tried to, to marry the two and not so much take the darker side of it. I mean, I kept it black and white because it is dealing with some more ominous, yeah, you know, ideas. But I tried to make it. See that they're coming out of it. That's why we get the splintering here. Well, and also uh, you're encompassing two different ends of his work, mm -hmm. like which is really uh, well. I and is this also based on a Picasso? It is not. It is not. This piece is called "I Seek Equality," mm -hmm. um, and it's based on the, the game Rock Paper oh. Scissors. Oh, yes, you're the second. Not the subtitle of the piece, right? Duh, Caroline. So I mean. Dolls children, we all use that game to sort of decide what we're going to do next. Yeah. And I like, I'm a big kid at heart, so I went with that thing. We actually have one other, uh, it's a triptych that is also about rock, paper, scissors, which is really fascinating uh, because she was playing with something similar but in a totally different style. And mine is a triptych as well. I have, a, I have two oh, things. You did say that. That's so funny. And what happens here is, so on one hand, it looks like they're doing the scissors, but mm -hmm. it also can stand for peace. So yes. I like to bring a little duality into the pieces. Um, the symbol going across the eyes is my symbol for equality. It's like an approach to equality. Yeah. So I think of an equal sign where normally they would be parallel to one another. But mm -hmm. I make my symbol a little askew because we're trying to approach equality. Yeah. Something that's always in motion. Yeah. Um, and that's the sense of what was going on here. And I like the play of different patterns and color. Um, a color plays a really big role, it, in my opinion. You have such vivid colors and such strong line in your pieces. Um, and also uh, a lot about um, energy and positive thought and uh, resilience. Um, can you talk a little bit, though, uh, about how color specifically plays into the energy and the way you think about your pieces? So it actually comes after the piece, uh, although most people think I, I, I paint with a color story in mind. Oh. Um, but I do know that my color story seems to take the same, same continuum no matter what painting I'm doing. Um, but to your point about positivity, mm -hmm. most of my pieces deal with love and yeah. messaging that deals with positive thought and, and positive vibrations. Um, so even the frenetic you know, things going on in the background, it's meant to be a vibration. Yeah, it's, it's energy. It, it, yeah, it has a, a, a positive, like, energy to I, it. I'm yeah. hoping. I'm, it's, it's chaotic, but it's meant to be a positive. It's meant to be energizing. Well, and you're also working with near, like, near complements, like uh, the orange to the green and the yellow, the yellow to uh, this is blue greenish, uh, which creates a very nice, um, like, Energy, like vibration, aura, like right. um, with it. Yeah, you, well, your shapes are doing that too. Yeah. Um, uh, around her head, it in that uh, greenish with the yellow, almost looks like an aura. So I get a sense of 
her speaking or uh, or um, conf not confronting, but coming up to you and you're I'm seeing her she's approaching you yes yeah and, and she appears very approachable which yeah. also makes sense because I see she's seeking exactly. something so and in, 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 the, in the play of the title equality equality is written in all caps yes because not all we only are we seeking equality but we all want quality of life yeah yeah, yeah. We all want and you can't have one without the other not at all um and the the movement I try to create movement whether it's with the googly eyes, I mean, who doesn't like googly eyes? <laughs> you, you can't be angry once you see googly eyes. That well, it makes you smile. smile. Exactly, and that's that's my that's my whole idea, is to get you laughing, to get you energized, to get you, if you weren't in a good mood, to get you into a good mood. Yeah, and well, you're engaging with uh, this idea of equality, which is universal, but that, to your point, we're still seeking, mm -hmm. but you're, um, because your pieces are bright and approachable, for some people, that will help them engage with that. Yes. I, I, I'm hoping it's a bridge to to, to dive in. Yeah. I mean, you can look at an issue, but you can take it on in a way that's not threatening too. You know, sometimes the big yeah. issues can get us all. Yeah. But I, I try to approach it in a playful manner. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't have to be polarized. Exactly. Because but I'm good, I'm the gonna... thing is, is it shouldn't be polarizing, but <laughs> for some reason it is. Mm. But I was going to uh, ask you uh, another question about the eyes, and that is, um, they they what you've done with the just eyes is use yeah you it's not just that you know it's it looks like there's two bends to the equal sign, but um, also that it's almost like yin and yang, so that she appears to be winking at me, mm -hmm. which makes me feel like so happy. And um, on the other hand, it's also, I'm looking at the play of the shapes that you're doing there. Um, and that's taking me actually to the question. We had one of our last artists who also does things that are very graphic, and these are very graphic pieces. But she relies on line. I would say you rely more on shape. So can you talk to us about how you compose with this idea of shape? Well, in respect to the eyes, um, like I was saying, the, the googly eyes, something about that is just, it just, it's going to bring children in. It's going to bring older people in. I mean, across all lines. It's you joyful. You see googly yeah. eyes and you, you just, you're just happy. <laughs> you're just happy. So I, I, I like the idea of shape. Of, I like certain symbols, like if, it, if it's a heart, you get a certain feeling. But I just try to create a shape with a movement that's going to draw people in. Yeah. You know, make people want to come in and, and figure out what's going on. Um, I, a lot of times I also try to create a shape around the individual, almost like a like a speech bubble. Like things are being yeah. said, things, there's dialogue going on, mm -hmm. but it's up to you to decide what is being said, what yeah. is being communicated to you, and what are you communicating to it. Um, there's also that sort of halo effect with all kind of angelic in our own ways. Mm -hmm. You can be the most rotten person, but we all have a distinctive aura. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that, that's the idea with that. Well, and I also, to build on what Carol was saying, um, you use line uh, to convey pattern, which conveys energy, which I think is really interesting because when we think about a lot of graphic things, we do think about the shape, but the line is what's actually giving it its shape, whereas your lines, uh, well, it goes beyond just goes giving beyond it shape. That. It gives it an energy and movement. Now, paper dolls is something that I loved growing up, and that's <laughs> that's another thing that comes into play. Oh yeah, I like the flatness of things, mm -hmm. but I like to create that movement and dimension yeah. through whether it's through um, layering with fabric and paper or the the shapes that I put into things. But at the same time, I want to put something current in there. I, I don't want the pieces to look like archaic or I, I, I want them to look current. And you I want them to fit to for the times we're living in. Right. Yeah. And I want them to be timeless too. Like I want you to be able yeah. to, I mean, I like that I have small children and I have, you know, much older people. It's the same appeal. Like yeah. you can see a, a cross section of people age wise, color wise, and they all seem to have the same reaction. Yeah. And that's my goal because Art is for everyone. That that I, I live by that. Art is for everyone. Love it. Uh, so, 
Yeah, and it should like it's meant to bring joy and thoughtfulness and it engagement. Like it. It like yeah. it. I mean, we say art is a conversation. Like enough. art is a conversation, whether there's words or not. Art is a conversation. I like that. I like um, that. I'm gonna ask you another quick question about the pattern, especially in this. You like the color? Does that come secondarily for you uh, as you after you sketched and uh, put the piece in and added the color, or do you think of the shapes and patterns the color comes secondary always uh -huh. um, it's it's the image it's the message um it's the story okay. i'm trying to tell first um and then the color comes afterwards i mean once i lay one color i just look to see what else complements it yeah and also want to see what screams against it yeah. you know because i don't always want it to be complimentary well, when you use black very effectively to um, bring, bring the, the yeah colors. bring the other stuff mm -hmm. forward, mm -hmm. like uh, the negative space works really well in your pieces. Um, There's also um, something which makes it very contemporary. There's something about some of your mark making that you're doing that reminds me of street art. Yeah, I have a, a huge fascination for street art. Yeah. Wherever I travel, one of the first places I go is to find the graffiti. <laughs> <laughs> I could be in Beijing and I'm looking for the graffiti. Yeah. So I don't have a particular mark that I make. This is one that you'll see in a lot of my other pieces in the black and white era. And I'm usually writing the letters of love. Oh. Mm. You know, sometimes it may be in manuscript, sometimes it may be in cursive, but I'm writing the individual letters of love and just You're actually it. putting love into it. I know. So and you it's more explicit. I know here love it's a little more. bit it's a little bit more hidden, but that is the idea. Well, anyone who comes in should go and try to trace some of those lines that are going around just to just to find the word love. I, I, I would hope so. That would um, that would mean I'd have to look at it every day. <laughs> well, if it takes that, it takes that. Is it, yeah, and uh, you that's know, the best place thing to better. look at it every day is in your own home. Like uh, exactly. So, so take, take so take, take it, it home with you. Take it with you. You can <laughs> engage all day. That's right. Um, I, um, oh, I want to say about street art. I think that the funny thing, because it's become so much more popular uh, in the 21st century, like street art with uh, all these bigger figures, um, and I would say like Bas Basquiat yeah, probably yeah. was the one who really broke that door open. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, is that we've had, uh, we've had street art and wall art and the art of the people since like time of memoriam. Like, I'll um, go to the Egyptian section, yeah. the Temple of Dendur. You, you'll you go and you'll see. Sure. And hey, cavemen have been writing the walls forever. I mean, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, Actually, it was cave women. Cave women. You're right. <laughs> You're right. Yes. <laughs> but but it, to, to your point, mark making has been ongoing, you know, from scribbles to what we see, you know, sometimes out here on buildings where... Some are more successful than others. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I also love that you incorporate, like in this piece, I love the glitter that uh, brings out. Now I'm a glitter girl. I, <laughs> we are also. Glitter. It's messy, but I, I love do, glitter. Just a little pop. I don't want to go overboard. So but I try to put a little little bling. A little bling. A little bling goes. Never hurt. A little, bling, hurt. A little hurt. bling never hurt. A little goes a long way, and a lot goes a lot more. So, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, these pieces are beautiful. I, I just want to say one more thing yes, about these Yes, please do. Um, I, I, I try to have fun with this one. Well, with all of them. Yeah. But with her. Because I always wonder, what's really going on underneath those garments? Yeah. Like, are they really as strict and stern as they appear to be? Yeah. I'm thinking everybody likes to have fun. That's true. So that's why you have like this little sexy number sort of underneath. You well, know, also, the silhouette is a little bit more sexy than I think that what's going on on the outside. in like uh, pop culture, we're taught that it's like that it's very staid and but everybody has a personality, mm -hmm. whether whether they're obscuring it while in public or not. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got a little something right. going on. Right. So right. I think it's a uh, I, I, she's playing the fanciest instrument. That's right, and she's got the fanciest glitter and the the shiny saxophone. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm partial. And she has the look at the shades, even her. Yeah, <laughs> her mask has a mask. It's so cool. Her mask has a mask. So yeah, these are really lovely, and everyone should come in and see them. They are bright. They are fun. They are energetic. 
Uh, and with a serious message. With a seri- with a, a, seri- a thoughtful message, I would say. Mm-hmm. Like, um, and that message is love. Yeah, love. Love bridges all. Yeah. Yeah. But if we were all a little bit more mindful of that, we wouldn't have some of the problems we have. No. My so, message is always love more. Yeah. So I live by that. Nobody but, ever got in trouble for being too loving. No, no. So no. I'm not talking about love obsession. Love is not love is it brings food. courtesy and, and if you can't treat your fellow it brings courtesy, person. it brings joy, it brings a feeling of nurturing to everyone. And so it's a great, a great message to bring through these bright, brilliant, beautiful pieces. Well, cut love up on these babies yeah. and they're yours. Yeah, if you want them. Yep, and they'll be here from January 19th through March 12th. Thank you so much. Thank you.